Oh no, I'm mentioning something controversial. <sighs> Thanks, YouTube. The 20th century probably changed no country more than China. Over the course of just 50 years, it went from an imperial system that existed since civilization began to a period of warring states, to civil war, to Maoist communist, to, well, whatever you can call China now. Today, China becoming communist seems just like an inevitability, but really, it was one of the most least likely scenarios that could have happened. For decades, Mao and his Red Army were simply a fringe, but through guerrilla warfare, some poor decision making by their enemies, and just dumb good luck, Mao eventually came up on top. But Cody, you say? There was never an armistice, so technically nobody won the Chinese Civil War because it didn't end. I don't think the nationalists preferred Taiwan over the mainland. So yeah, in all sense, the communists won. So the question here is, what if the communists lost the Chinese Civil War? If you want to know what started the war, these channels have covered the lead up far better and more in depth than I ever could. I'd recommend watching one of those videos first. You good? Alright, with this alternate timeline, what's the decisive moment that everything changes? After the Nationalists launched a purge of thousands of Communists, war had begun. The Communists actually had it pretty bad for the first few years of the war. By 1934, they were on the brink of becoming just another footnote in China's long history. Surrounded by all sides by the Nationalists, in their desperation, they decided the best move was to retreat and reorganize. Break through the weakest opening and march 9,000 kilometers north through mountains and warlords to regroup at a better position. 90% didn't make it through the year-long trek, many dying from crossing a river which led to a change in leadership, but it was the maneuver that saved the Red Army and put Mao on track to becoming a national figure. In this alternate scenario, one simple change is the Communists don't take the long march. They don't escape. Instead, they are surrounded and annihilated. The Nationalists become the single greatest power in a war-torn China. To them, at least their biggest rival is now gone. But now the Nationalists alone have to deal with another enemy. A foreign enemy. The Nationalists in our timeline handled the Japanese invasion, uh, poorly. Granted, it took the industrial might of the United States to ultimately destroy Japan's industrial capabilities, but even then, for the Nationalists, the way they conducted themselves didn't paint them in the best light. Like abandoning Nanking, their own capital, doing nothing to stop the Japanese from, well, you know or intentionally flooding one of the most populated regions to stop Japan's advancements, killing 400 to 500,000 of their own civilians in the process. Yeah, they weren't, uh, perfect or competent. Even if the Nationalists did win against the Communists, they still probably would have done such buffoonish maneuvers during the war, which only hurts their own reputation to the general public. Those mistakes by the Nationalists don't come to bite them in the ass, so to say. But I doubt there could be some major other force that could challenge them. With Japan gone and the Communists defeated, Nationalist China goes into the 50s in a new post-war world. A China without Communism isn't a China without authoritarianism. Probably something that just comes with having the most populated country in the world. The Nationalists, or Kuomintang, were not pro-democracy. In the beginning, under Sun Yat-sen's guidance, yes, the original Nationalists did wish for an American-style government, but these were early days. Hell, the Nationalists and Communists were even common allies against the imperial system. However, over time, and especially after Sun's death, the Nationalists' goal became a united China, under one party, for at least a while. And we never actually saw the democracy part till... Taiwan in the 80s. China going into this post-war world is one that above all else hates communists. I can assume this relationship translates to at least a positive one with the Americans moving into the 50s. 
but I doubt they'd remain the best of friends with them or Europe. Chang was vocal about renegotiating the unfair treaties with the West made after European wars. So I don't think non-communist China just jumps into becoming a part of the free world after the war. Instead, they'd become a dictatorship, one-party state. They might lean more towards the US, but it'd still be a colder relationship than, say, Japan or Germany. Unlike those countries, which were basically built from the ground up by the Allies, China wouldn't welcome Westerners just coming in again and making decisions for their country. Bad memories, you could say. Even with that said, China still would be vulnerable to Soviet influence considering the border they share, and it'd be this initial defense that's the majority of American-Chinese relations. Even if China was not communist, the Korean War probably still would have happened. North Korea still would have invaded and the Soviets would have supplied them. The difference here, however, is that the war would be over very quickly. The only reason the war ended in a stalemate at all after three years was because the Chinese launched a full-scale invasion, pushing back the South. If China was to get involved at all, it'd be to aid the UN, Americans, and South Koreans to stop the North, and Kim Il-sung's reign would end just as soon as it began, Korea becoming fully united. Or maybe China taking a little bit. Vietnam never would have entered the vocabulary of Americans, remaining a small Southeast Asian nation that, even if it was split, would have become a very short war if the North did attempt to unify the nation. So you get the point. China becoming communist caused the greatest shift in American foreign policy. Before 1950, even though the Soviets had taken control of half of Europe, the Cold War was still limited to just Europe. There was a fear of worldwide communism from the West, but that fear wasn't realized until the world's largest nation became red. From then on, stopping communism from spreading to any other nation across the globe became top priority for the West. The domino theory was born and was seen as the main reason for why the US should dedicate so much effort into a tiny country like Vietnam, no matter the cost. But without communist China, America's main focus remains on Europe and not proxy wars in Asia. The Cold War in a way becomes less escalated, the world split but less so, and the conflict less global in turn. The 60s still would have been rocked by the civil rights movement, but as for the identity of the majority of Americans, Vietnam and the fear of the rise of communism is much less considered. This is very difficult to accurately predict. While there is some historical precedent to go off how nationalist China would, you know, govern, the easiest thing to say is millions certainly don't die from Mao's collectivist policies, so to tackle this, let's start in broad changes, then go into specifics. First, the modern culture of China itself. Yes, the millions of deaths certainly would have an impact on the nation, but I'd say the most defining impact of Mao was the Cultural Revolution. Mao's plan to create a permanent revolution, rile up the masses, call for a purge of the party, and go back to the good old days, as in, before he destroyed his credibility with the famine. He shut down schools and students became a new generation of revolutionaries, reading the books of Mao and remembering to destroy the old, which included teachers, intellects, historical and cultural artifacts of old China. A million died. By the 70s, Mao died and China thought, hey, maybe some parts of capitalism aren't all bad. It was this that really killed the old Chinese culture, the one of Confucius, old dynastic ideals and traditional thought. Chang, on the other hand, was adamant about traditional Chinese culture and ideals. The nationalists at least preserved that culture, and were at least more kind to religion. China certainly isn't a democracy by any means. Chang ruled Taiwan until his death. Taiwan didn't start actually becoming democratic until the mid-80s. I say this to show where the nationalists stood politically. We can't just copy Taiwan's history and paint it as an alternate China. China would be fully united by the 30s, meaning they'd have decades to attempt to industrialize. How effective would this be? 
while it would certainly be better than Mao forcing people to make steel in their backyards, by any means China would join the global economy decades before our own. And this has both positive and negatives. As a positive, the country isn't isolated socially and economically until the 70s like under Mao. It has a chance to build itself up and grow its nation. On the negative, now a fragile Chinese state ruled by a party with not the best track record of stability is a part of the global economy. So take that as you will. Alternate history is theorizing. It's not a prediction set in stone. If China never turned to communism, it's plausible that it remains an authoritarian one-party state for a time, but gradually shifts to a democracy. Or maybe the corruption and instability of the nationalists leads to yet another civil war. Or maybe it'd remain a one-party state, and the people would simply be fine with that. To be honest, whether communist or nationalist, the modern problems we have with the China we see today probably would have been the exact same. Once Mao died, China began its own reforms, tore down his policies that were even unpopular when he was alive. It may call itself communist, may even still fly the red banner, but the China of today is really, really similar to that one-party state the nationalists once fought for. Communism was tried, as always, millions died, and it was switched out. The market today isn't as free as Europe or America, but China today is capitalistic. Its party is tied hand in hand with its own owned corporations. If Nationalist China did rise, we'd see fewer of these state-owned companies, but the effects that nation has on the global stage would probably just be the same. The problems with China today is that it's really the way China has always been. The state has always been authoritarian to keep control of such a large population. China before the European spheres of influence was the exact same way, and the China we see today is as well. In my opinion, I don't think that a China under the nationalists would have been liberalized like they did in Taiwan. Hell, even the United States with hundreds of years of practice still has its own issues on the matter. Brutal crackdown of dissidents, authoritarian measures, and wariness of outside influence it simply transformed and changed clothes throughout the centuries, rising no matter who would have won. The only difference is who gets to take the credit. But China certainly is an enigma. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub.